Welcome back everyone for round number 14, the very last Swiss round of this tournament, yes. Regional Championship Bochum in Germany. Uh, I'm David and joined by Martin. Hi. Uh, we are going to jump into the game after one short thing. Uh, if you followed the stream until now, you might have noticed that before every raid game, there's a video of me showing this Pikachu and explaining that there is a giveaway. This We had a very complicated plan for this. But because of technical issues, unfortunately it didn't work, so maybe it was a little bit annoying seeing this ad uh, every round. Um, because, yeah, it didn't work out like we actually intended to. However, now there are only four rounds left, and like we mentioned, we have four of the Russian Charizard to give away. So we are starting a giveaway for this round, actually. Um, you can type in the chat, exclamation, way, uh, exclamation mark, giveaway, and that will explain everything uh, to you. So if you're in interested in that, um, yeah, you can do it now. If you have any questions, just uh, chat and one of our other team members will uh, help you help you out and uh, answer your questions. Yes. However, this tournament is really weird because... Yeah, it's um, kind of weird. So day two, there was like a huge... Like, there were, like the amount of points people have is interestingly distributed. So there are currently seven people who have um, 31 points or above. Mm -hmm. And all of them, of course, want to ID into 32 points. And then there are five people, or four, yeah, there are four people who have 29 points, so they need to win. Yes. So one of the seven people who could ID gets down paired, and then one of the four people also gets down paired. So you have um, one match where it's someone who could have ID'd has to win, and the opponent can also get in if they win. Then we have a real yes. win it in with two people with 29 points. If they win, they can get in. But this is still, I think, on the tiebreaker. Um, and then there is one person who got uh, payout down. This is actually Crystal, who we showed earlier. He's playing against someone with 28 points, who even if they win, has no chance of making top eight. So now there are six people who just ID'd, are already in top eight, and there are two people who have a chance. Yes. And one of these, uh, two of these people who still have, uh, th so there are two matches, four people that still have a chance. Uh, actually, five people who still have a chance, I'm sorry. Um, and one of the, uh, two of these people we are going to feature, um, Joshua we already showed today, and against, uh, playing against Pedro. Yes. And the matchup is probably not as interesting. The alternative would have been another PG control. Yeah, but we wanted to spare you. Yeah, so, so there is Jesper ID into top 8, so there's definitely a PG uh, control in top 8. And if that PG control maybe gets into the final, we do not want to just show PG control from here on. So we decided <laughs> to uh, choose a different match. Ha even though PG control is very interesting and I kind of like talking about it, I think watching it all day um, might get a little bit boring quick. So again, we have um, Joshua from Belgium. You might know him from YouTube. He's like he, I th this YouTube channel is so old. I even watched it when I just started out playing, like 2009. It's um, very cool to see him uh, on stream now as well. Mm -hmm. Playing against Pedro, really, really strong player. Just, um, yeah, he has, a, he has so many co accomplishments. If you looked at any results from recent tournaments, he is always on there somehow. Yeah, Pedro uh, is really consistent and really, really good. Like, he, I think he entered with day two with like six to one, and he just won out the whole day. And yeah, he's here now playing and uh, he's winning in for um, the top eight and like that really shows how what a strong player Pedro is yes even holding holding his own against like like playing in day two is like a completely different tournament because the caliber of players is so strong they are like no auto wins anymore you just can't play you just can't go on like autopilot and then just win a matchup you have to think about everything and yeah be really um, aware of the different situations. Yeah, Pedro playing his um, ADP deck, got blessed by the gods to just continue winning. Really unfortunate here for him. I guess uh, fate wanted it that way. Um, he could not ID, he got down paired. Um, so now he has to play out. So for him it's uh, kind of annoying since he had quite good chances of just getting I given the um, spot. But also, it kind of changes the dynamic a little bit since um, if he ties, he's still in. Like, he can naturally tie. Yes. But Joshua has to win this game. I mean, even if he ties, he's still probably top 16. Um, yeah. So that's not too bad. However, he wants, he to, wants to win this whole tournament, yes. right? So he just 
uh, wants to win this game as well. Um, so let's see how this goes. Pedro, typical start, opening Jirachi, attaching a, an, a, an energy to ADP, and that's basically all you need. Yeah, it's we see Joshua draw for turn. We saw him on stream earlier, yeah, as you already said, but still, um, I think the matchup for him is quite good, even though he tied in a similar matchup versus Adam Hawkins earlier. But um, this time, yeah, maybe maybe he can just adapt to like some of the minor mistakes he made in the in the last game. Just just do everything like a slight bit better, and it might be enough to push him over the line in this matchup that you is certainly like very good, uh, very good for him. Like usually, you would think like, okay, ADP takes extra prizes, right? That's really good versus non-GX attacker. But if those non-GX Pokemon just one shot you for 300 damage from turn two going forward. It will be really tough to establish a stable board and uh, get energy into play with Ultimate Ray and take knockouts. Yeah, but one difference between Pedro and uh, Adam's ADP list is that they are like a different version. So Pedro just plays typical ADP just for Jirachis and Arceus, Dialga, Palkia. And that's basically it. He also plays, uh, yeah, of course, Kelio, GX, um, like you would expect. But um, Adam played the... Zepdos, oh, I forgot the order. Moltres, Articuno, Zepdos, Tag Team. The Bird Trio. Yeah, exactly. We call it. <laughs> so um, basically, um, he had a different option since he could use the GX attack. Yeah. And he had Victini, which he can attack with and get some energy on board. Um, Pedro's list is quite different. But also, I think that this is not a good thing in this particular situation. No, since he not. just has less options. The Kelio doesn't do anything. Um, Pedro plays a tag of Alona Ninetales, which is also just doesn't do anything. Pretty <laughs> useless in this matchup, um, right? So he has a lot of cards that work that are very strong against other decks that are not Blucephalon. So yeah, for Pedro, a really bad luck. First of all, getting down paired, and then all of all the decks he could meet, he has to play against Blucephalon. And uh, Joshua's first turn looked kind of fine. Like yeah, he got he just greens, he greens. got some energy. Um, and now he turned over one of his prize cards. So we actually can't see it anymore, uh, but it's fine. I actually forgot which it was. <laughs> but I think it was a fine. fire crystal, but yeah, yeah whatever. whatever. It's not too relevant. Like The prize cards on both players, again, don't look too relevant. We see a Giraffarig, a nice little counter against um, stall decks. There are a lot of them in this tournament. I don't know if yeah. you've seen during the break screen, and earlier today we showed the uh, meta game. But this is... Yeah, Stall is still going strong. As uh, you see, Pedro just playing Cynthia and Caitlyn, drawing some more cards. He wants a water energy this turn to go for the... Maybe go for al altered creation. Uh, he already has one in hand, so just get the Stellar Wish in, in between. And yeah, I'm really not sure what attacker he will choose to ultimate raid to. Uh, probably Kelio, since that's his best option of consistent damage output. Um, but it, that still gives two prizes and is a down trade. Like he's tra he's tra trading down on prizes, uh, no matter what. Uh, even if he gets the uh, GX attack off from ADP, then Kelio is trading even, which is still not a good thing. Like usually when you go for altered creation GX, you uh, your your deck is uh, like you, the deck. Uh, the goal of your deck is to trade up on prizes in the late game. Yeah, your early game suffers a little bit. It's a little bit slower. Uh, you just go attach pass, attach pass, uh, and then attack eventually. Um, but you trade up in the late game usually. Uh, but this time in this matchup, it's uh, really really hard to do that. So as you see, Jirachi being grabbed by the communication here. Yeah, get those stellar wishes out. Search for your combo pieces, so you give yourself the best chance um, to hit what you need. Yeah, so in theory, I mean, ADP is usually kind of has the upper hand against non-GX decks because they can just use a double prize GX mm -hmm. attack and then they only need to knock out half of the Pokémon they would usually need. Like, if you knock out two Pokémon tag team, for example, even if you draw an extra prize card on both of them, it's still two knockouts that you need to take. Yeah. And if you take out Pokémon GX, it goes down from three. Like, you usually you need to knock out three Pokémon GX. Now you only need to knock out two of them. 
but um, against GX decks it's cut in half. So uh, against non-GX decks it's cut in half. Usually you have the upper hand. However, in this particular case, because Blacephalon is such a strong non-GX Pokémon that can deal so much damage at once, it's still really difficult because Blacephalon can just take a big one at knockout. So Blacephalon is really good against GX, uh, attack against Tag Team X, mm -hmm. uh, against Tag Team decks, but not really good against non-GX decks, and especially, yeah, not so great yeah, against Lock. Yeah, uh, if you're a Blacephalon player, you really suffer versus Malama, but Malama wasn't popular at this tournament. Yes. So, like, people really left their squids at home this time around. Uh, which I can understand. Um, like people were figuring out how to how to beat Malama very consistently with a variety of different decks. So yeah, I I agree with the decision, but that always left the spot for other non GX decks to rise. We actually, I think we also have a fossil player, which is either in top cut or in top sixteen. So like I think there is I think there is a fossil locked for top eight actually. Yeah yeah. I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, the absence of Malama has really left open a niche for other non GX decks to yeah. perform very well. And I think we saw a similar thing at the LAIC uh, for Sao Paulo where Baby Blacephalon bubbled ninth. So yeah, you see when Malama isn't in the in present in the meta game as we see a reset step, yeah, step down Pedro's like ten card hand. Just don't let, let him have that many options. Yeah. When Malama is not in the meta game, it really leads, uh, leaves open a niche for other non-GX decks to thrive. Yeah, the meta game is like an ecosystem, and <laughs> like one species disappears, and then all the niches, all the other animals or decks, they can just get their um, advantage here. And one of the niches, which are uh, one of these decks that fill this um, hole left by the uh, disappearance of Malamar is Blacephalon and like you said something like fossils just like the when you take out Malamar what kind of leaves is just tag team Pokemon like the tag teams are so strong mm -hmm. um, yeah and now everything is just uh, I can I can knock out tag teams really easily so that's the deck I want to play and then you have something like Blacephalon and all the tag team teams have a lot of difficulties yeah playing against that. yeah it, it balances out like it's always um, what the majority of people decides to bring to tournaments. So th it's it's uh, always quite uh, quite interesting to see. But like also a lot of deck picks actually come down to comfort. Like you just play what you're good at. I we I think we saw Pedro play the ADP deck at the Latam uh, IC as well. So yeah, he just stuck to. I would say a deck that he's comfortable with, and just. Um, yeah, you just improve on playing the deck and um, get better at the certain matchups with it, and it's uh, instead of like adapting all the time. So yeah, you need to you need to make a decision: do I bring what's considered the best meta call, or do I bring what's considered, uh, you know, my comfort deck? So yeah, always uh, decide in between, like what you feel better about. As we see, a tag call for an ADP and a Cynthia and Caitlyn. Pedro will start to build up his hand back again. And yeah, this was uh, actually Yosha's only stamp, so there won't be any hand disruption coming from him uh, for the rest of the game. Yeah, and similarly to what um, Adam did in our previous round, I think one of Pedro's winning options is just try to play reset stamp and then make Yoshua just with his welder. Or yeah, just, um, I think Adam actually did a really good job at that. Like um, he timed his stamps pretty good. I like I know he spammed them a little bit. Like he stamped every time he had the opportunity to do so, but it made sense in those certain scenarios. So yeah, now All we right. see <laughs> a stamp Fate being Pedro's grabbed. already looking like yeah, this is how I will win. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like now the Giachi is because the tech teams, they give three prize cards. Like you can just have two Jirachis being knocked out, doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. It's just the more resources your opponent has to invest. It's not too relevant, and it's actually a little bit interesting because it just, for Joshua, it puts a lot of fire energy in the discard pile, but that just makes us out after a uh, reset time a little bit better since... Yeah, you'd only have to draw the fire crystal, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah, and fire crystals fire give you um, a lot more options, and it's not like he needs to discard a lot to knock out a judge. It's weak, so it's like one energy is already fine. 
Yeah, I think you would like to be in a position where after your opponent takes a knockout, you just want to have like five or six energy in the discard pile. That seems really good. Like with Fiery Flint, when you get slammed to low, you often don't have enough cards to maybe discard yeah. and welder and custom catcher in the same turn. But if, for example, there are enough energies in the discard pile that you can just Fiery Flint them back, it makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, and here we see Altered Creation. Um, Pedro could have used this attack last turn, but he did this turn because if he does it um, yeah, this turn, he gets the advantage of using counter gain. Mm -hmm. So he can, like last turn, he didn't have the extra energy on the one on the bench. Yeah, so he had no backup setup, yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. And also this way, Joshua had to draw a prize card. So now Joshua's stamps are just a lot weaker. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Pedro can next turn just use ultimate raid, draw two prize cards, charge the next Pokemon up. The alternate, I mean, there's also, like, I mean, if, it, if he does it earlier, then yeah, there are a lot I of think variables. If yeah, if you do it last turn yeah. as Pedro, you are really, l like, if the worst case scenario happens, you just lose. Yeah. it's The game is instantly over. But by waiting uh, another turn, you just, um, you say, okay, I have an ADP with an energy on my bench and if you knock me out then I'm going to stamp you to two I'm going to take extra prizes so like every prize every knockout I take will bring me way way closer to my goal and I still have something to attack with because when he gets knocked out then it's fine he stamps plays the Rosa gets the counter gain and the energy uh, out of his deck and is ready to attack again so really really smart play by Pedro not overextending and uh, just playing it calm. Yeah. And now after the altered creation, as Joshua's turn again, he finds uh, self, uh, himself a greens just with, um, yeah, with a Pokemon, a Poke Gear. Mm -hmm. Can just take Fire Crystals or Fairy Flints, anything he likes. Maybe a Welder to back up. He just all Joshua wants to do now is attack twice. He just yeah. wants to knock out two Arceus Dialga and. Then he's basically done. Then he won. <laughs> yeah, so... And we see the Clefairy doll. That's a really cool addition to the deck. Yeah. I, re I really like this card because you can just put it active at certain points. The Cephalons, sometimes, like, you just need to accumulate your hand cards. Yeah, sometimes you're just like, okay, I'm fine with just passing one turn and you don't really want to sacrifice a Blacephalon in the active. And then Lily's Pokedoll is just the perfect yeah. card. To do and so. then, like, because there is not, like, the opponent cannot use Great Catcher, mm -hmm. so it's really difficult for them to get around a Clefairy Doll. And this also, it makes a lot of things a lot easier because it makes your B string, like, it gives you an extra turn of B string if you really need it. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you the option to just use Greens and to Welder and then wait that turn. And against Pedro, for example, Pedro will take a knockout on the Blacephalon, and then Josh Joshua can just put Clefairy Doll active, and then Pedro has to knock out that Clefairy Doll. But nothing happens on Pedro's side. So it just gives Joshua one extra turn where he can draw the Fire Energy. And now, yeah, we see Joshua took the Fire... Yeah, it was the Fire Crystal from the prize cards. Three prize cards. Fireball fire, Circus. Fire Crystals in his hand. He Pedro doesn't expect to keep those anyway. Like, you yeah. saw Pedro take the stamp, pa so Pedro he just needs to... Oh, he draw the second stand. <laughs> Why not? And <laughs> yeah, now Pedro needs the metal energy card and the yeah. uh, the the gain. But I think the gain is already in his hand. Yeah. The counter gain. Hmm. Or maybe he waits another turn. But just uh, no. Then ah, uh, I'm not sure because then if Joshua takes one more prize card, oh one yeah, more no, no. Joshua also has custom catcher in his deck. Yeah. So also that. Yeah. And uh, then, if he takes one more knockout, then he would just need to burst Jax from the Bacephalon Jax. True, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've and then he would that. just win the game. So, yeah, probably you want to go this turn. You want to go as soon as possible. Uh, for Pedro, now the game started for him. Like, yeah. now he wants to go aggressive, take knockouts, and uh, just make a comeback. Like, this is... It feels a little bit similar to Pikazek. Like, you want to go behind, and then eventually you stamp. I mean, for Pikazek, it's paralysis from right to right through. For ADP, it's take extra prizes and do extra damage. It feels kind of similar, uh, because then you just are able to finish a game really, really quickly without your opponent being able to do a lot about it. 
Yeah, and Pedro does have um, the Guzmahala in hand, eyeing that up to just go for the Rainbow Energy card. Yeah, basically just the Rainbow Energy card. I don't think yeah. there's much that he needs. I mean, from this point on, it's just... It doesn't... <laughs> like, maybe he would also want to charge a second ADP. Because then if the act, like if Joshua decides to you just can switch around damage it, the right? active one, and, yeah. Yeah, and then he can retreat. But I mean, usually Joshua, he will now promote the Lily Pokodo, and if he has enough energy, he will just put that back and then win. And if it's not, then he will just leave the Pokodo active. And why, why would you ever damage something like halfway through um, with this kind of deck, especially with the Pokodo already on your bench? Yeah, so yeah. Pedro just retreats, attaches the counter gain, and goes for the... Attack. Where is the counter gain, actually? Is it? Yeah, it's in his hand. I oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I mean, like, why would you... Yeah, yeah, I know, but, I yeah. know. It but should it be. It definitely is in his hand. Cut yeah. down any po at any time. Yeah, right there it is. As we see, Ultimate Ray probably yeah, not accelerating any... End. I mean, there's merit. I, I was like... I yeah, you need to play the stamp at some point. Don't forget the stamp. Yeah, <laughs> that's important, kind of. I mean, there's... Uh, like, if you get damaged, right, by something... You can just uh, mellow and Lana and heal the damage off and switch into the Jirachi instead of like powering up an extra ADP or something. Um, or probably you search out the energy and attach it to the active because if your active gets knocked out, you lose anyway. And this way you, you thin out the energy from your deck and you have access yeah. to a little bit more cards. So I like that searching out a little bit of energy cards, like a few, uh, and then probably won't go for more any uh, for any more after that like just the three and then it's fine um, and also what I what I like is oh actually attaching to Jirachi <laughs> like yeah, I was <laughs> just thinking if the Jirachi is able to knock out the polka doll yeah because should then, be able to. Li like you just said, that the Blacephalon can just take a press cut with the GX attack, but Pedro can also use the Great Catcher. Yeah, just Great Catcher it up, knock it out, go down to one price, and then... Yeah, that's like one interaction I wanted to talk about, because like the Blacephalon, Green's Blacephalon deck, is not really able to find their Pokémon very easily. Like, they rely on the Ultra Space really yeah. hard. And if Pedro's able to put the Chaotic Swell in play before the Ultra Space comes down, um, he's able to deny a lot of Pokemon Surge. Because now, yeah. Uh, oh, Yoshua, yeah. Yoshua's Yoshua hand is really bad. Yeah, Yoshua got rid of the Ultra Space, uh, of the Chaotic Swell, but we know, or like everyone knows, Yoshua knows as well, that Pedro just has another Chaotic Swell in yeah. hand that he can put down on an exile. So Yoshua won't be able to find um, his Ultra Beast at any point soon. So, yeah, and also his hand is quite dead. So the stamp. Has fulfilled its full effect, uh, really nice, uh, just a pass. Exactly what you want to see when you stamp your opponent down to two. Just see them, oh, draw, mm, my hand is dead, I can't do yeah. anything. So and now Pedro can basically prepare his hand. He has a Melolana in hand and he also has an energy. So he can just switch the active ADP to the bench. He actually decides to use the extra effect, so he can heal the 10 damage. I don't know if that makes... How much HP does it have? It's uh, 280. Oh yeah, so it doesn't make any difference. Oh wait, does it? With the I mean, if he gets burned and confused, like if yeah, if, if he gets twenty from burn at some point, so it could make a difference. Yeah. So, but you might might as well use. The I extra mean, effect, definitely right? use it. It's just, I mean, even Pokemon is just a game of maximizing your chances, basically. Yeah. And just maximizing your chances mean also just like well, in the off chance that he just goes for Blessful and chase one energy confuses me, and then. I have to, I'm, I'm burned, I get 20 damage, I have to switch, then it's one energy less for Yoshua to draw if I keep the damage. Um, but Pedro actually just yeah, puts the Jirachi active retreats. So he's just not decide to, to attack take with the knockout uh, with the ultimate ray. Yeah, but Which we see the second chaotic swell. So I guess it's fine um, to take the knockout with ADP because you still have another Melo and Lana to heal if you get damaged. And you know that Yosha just drew pass, so... Oh, oh Pedro's that double cast in really that's good. so much better, yes. yes. Okay, that exactly makes a lot of sense. Exactly what he wants to. That makes Knock out, like he played Chaotix well, he knocks out Blacephalon, and then he puts Joshua in such a terrible position. Yosha needs to draw so many cards now. He just needs to have the Blacephalon in his hand. He can't use Ultra Space, already tuned the Discord Pile. Quite unlikely for him There's to draw. There's a Welder off the top. Yeah, but Welder attached it one. Like, it's the best three. card he can draw, but still it doesn't like really do anything for him. But so. He got another 
to ferry it all, and he can also get rid of the Codex well again. Yeah. And now it's interesting because. Hmm? Wait, what's going on? Pedro's still attaching from Ultimate Ray, I oh, think. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he keeps spinning out <laughs> the energy out of his deck. Get, get like 11 energy on the ADP. It's fine. Yeah, already. So Joshua, now you, he had the chance. He had the choice between using Heat Factory and now Pedro or has Ultra the Space to get rid of yeah. the uh, yeah the Kotox well. Yeah, and like you just said, Pedro has Great Catcher, so in theory he can win this turn. Yeah, if he if he gets the Great Catcher this turn, then he should win. But yeah, first he needs to get it. I'm not sure. I don't see it in his hand currently. Well, he does have a switch in his hand. So he can use Stellar Wish. Yeah, it, so right? he can use Stellar Wish. And since he continues to use his energy cards, yeah, yeah, he has a fine chance. And even if he... Well, I don't think he has a half... Like, maybe he plays Custom Catcher, like we just saw. Mm -hmm. So he has he either just needs a Great Catcher or a Double Custom Catcher. But I don't think there's any card in the deck that can search for an item. Yeah. Yeah, so only Jirachi and... Maybe, Draw. yeah, he's, he's counting out the cards that maybe I, he can Lily for something first to maximize his chances again. Um, like, yeah, <laughs> retreat, both, use both hands because there are so many energy cards <laughs> on the ADP. And then just, yeah. Okay, he's going for the Stellarish now. Oh, he's taking it, like, he, he's like considering, considering it. Um, and yeah, they're, they're discuss discussing. Yeah, and it's it fine. Did, he did it's not use fine. it, so he, he can use, use Lily for a oh, single custom catcher. The custom catcher. So now he has the two outs. <laughs> he has two outs. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Just see. push it together. Five Stack cards. up energy. Five cards, and he doesn't nah, get it well, just yet. That's fair. It's not too likely to have it, and I he mean still has a lot of options. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, at this point, he's in still in such a good position. Yeah, so. he doesn't even need to. Like, I mean, Slap is so cool. I really want him to just attack Slap with Jirachi, the but, I think, but mm -hmm. I think he can't uh, ever use this because he always wants to Stellar Wish just off for the chance to get... Um, yeah. yeah. He wants to Stellar Wish just for the chance to get it, and then once he Stellar Wish, he can't attack anymore, which is a interesting downside on Jirachi. <laughs> like, I don't think that was the intention <laughs> behind <laughs> it, um, sleeping itself. And Pedro is just passing. Because he knows. Well, if you if knock the out the Blacephalon this comes up, if right? Yeah, yeah, like if you knock out the Jirachi with Blacephalon, then you lose. So you're not going to do that. But yeah. if you use a Welder to attach three and uh, like and attach three energy cards to a new non-JX oh, Blacephalon, well, that's yeah. very unlike. And yeah, like you said, tough decision coming up here with this Acrobat. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but no, I was no, like no, no, no. I was <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. As we see, yeah, actually, actually decides for the Poke Gear. It's more important and <laughs> there are two supporters in a top three so yeah just take the greens like Joshua will probably try to build up his hand again but like Pedro has so many options like so many ways that he can win um, on the on the following turn so yeah it's looking kind of rough for Joshua right now as he grabs the fire crystal and the welder um, off his deck, like he needs, um, like I, I'm really not sure what he wants to power up now. He probably has to go for the Blessephalon GX because they are just so um, like little ways for him to find the baby Blessephalon. As he actually can put the heat factory in play now. As you said, like there was a smart decision to bump it with the the chaotic square with the ultra space earlier, so he could have access to the heat factory with the extra draw. But we just see a pass, and if Pedro can just get either his last custom catcher or um, his great catcher out of his deck this turn, then um, the game will be over. But um, still, Joshua is maximizing his chances, as you talked about. Like he is drawing extra cards, setting up, and maybe if Pedro whiffs. At some point, oh, and as Pedro, he Jirachi. even drew another Jirachi, so he can it's place really down Jirachi, big. retreat, use another Stellar Wish. He still has the Mellow and Lana in hand, so and a switch as well. Yeah, so yeah, like so, so exactly. many switching so cards. Has, now he has two turns where he can just double Stellar Wish, and he is not really on the clock since Joshua's um, yeah field is so kind of empty. Yeah, always with those green stack, you grab something with greens yet you want to set up for the next turn, but Pedro has the second stamp. There you go. Like, 
everyone knew that this was coming. Yes. Like Pedro, Pe uh, Pedro was playing towards this. So, um, yeah, stamping Joshua back down to two, and then Joshua would probably need another turn of grabbing stuff with the greens and setting up for a one shot. So, um, yeah, it's really tough. And Pedro has so many uh, many outs that he can draw. So you see Wolpix and the Fairy Energy being drawn. Um, and then he has two Stellar Wishes. So he sees uh, five cards, top five cards from his deck two times. And he even can thin out one more card um, with the with the Stellar Wish now. Maybe even play the Cherish Ball. Yeah, yeah you just, just want to maximize your chances. Grab everything you do not want to see. Like there are maybe ten cards left. And um, yeah, there's the Custom Catcher in his deck. Also, I don't know. I don't. I didn't see the great catcher, but it's probably in his deck. Like I didn't see it hit the discard pile earlier. I so don't think he discarded it, but maybe he did. Well, yeah, maybe we missed it. But yeah, it's fine. either way. He definitely has at least one out still in his deck. And here we see mm -hmm. the switch, bringing up the other Jirachi with the. Um, uh, escape board, and now we have a kind there of yeah, the and custom here it is, catcher. custom catcher. Pedro got the second piece to this game, and you're just like, should I, should I, yeah, okay, do I put my cards together, do I yeah. scoop? Yes, oh, and we and we just went and saw just how good Pedro just is as a player. He maneuvered this beautifully, just yeah, went that was into, really clean. Um, he knew exactly when he had to do what. And I like rumor says that Pedro didn't sleep a lot this <laughs> night, um, so he is really tired. But even with this kind of handicap, he still manages to just dominate the field. It's so amazing. Um, but like also on Yoshio's side, I mean, he did everything he could. Like his first few turns could have looked a lot better, and now maybe he might actually adapt now that he know. Like I mean, he knows already that stamp is like the most. Yeah, that's difficult the thing. The counter to, to his deck. Yes. Yeah. So maybe th this time he will try to set up a little bit more before he actually starts attacking. But also with Pedro, he doesn't waste any time. He knew the fastest he can use his GX attack is when af like after he attached three energy from hand, and then mm -hmm. with the counter gain, the counter gain was actually yeah was really key. Yes. It's a one off, so it wasn't that likely that he actually hit it since he cannot. Um, well, I mean he actually he can, can, he can Rosa for it, yeah. for it, he can Guzma yeah, Hala for it. So and Rosa for it, so it's fine, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's that's actually a nice thing about uh, Guzma Hala, in my opinion. It makes cards that are really hard to access right now, like special energies and tools and stadiums. It makes it searchable, which is like a really nice addition to the game. Yeah. I, r I like that a lot. So yeah, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty cool card, especially now with Tech Call. You can always search for it, so you have this like... Well, I need the counter gain, but I can either just draw into Guzmahala with my Jirachi, or I can draw into Tech Call, or get either of these with Jirachi. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, pretty nice. So let's look at the price cuts. Three fire energy price. That shouldn't be too bad. Like yeah. you expect. Like when the, the Poké Doll might be relevant, but like we saw last game, didn't end up mattering anyways. And yes. on Pedro's side, we see kind of a normal distribution. Yeah, the, gain is, the gain is not there, so this gives him one turn, which is uh, pretty nice. Yeah. And he see. starts Mimikyu, which is also not too bad. It's, too ba it's not too bad. He can, like, filch Yeah, just filch stuff. a bit. Like Build up your hand. Yoshua is probably going to take the first knockout anyway. As we see, uh, Yoshua is, like, playing lightning fast right now because yeah, he, he needs knows to win. He if he ties, he, there's no chance for him to go into top eight. And if Pedro ties, then, yeah, okay. Then um, it's it uh, the fairy one. The fairy Mimikyu. Yeah, it's actually a fairy Mimikyu, but it's fine. It's th it does the same thing. Yeah, so, so now you know what it does. Um, it's just a fairy one, which is not relevant for this. But yeah, and Pedro's it touches <laughs> an. En this is actually. Does he have another basic? Though? Like you do not want to do this. Attaching a basic energy to a, a Pokemon that is not ADP in your first turn. Okay, he gets he gets the Kaleo. Yeah, so but he's still. I mean, he does this way. He doesn't lose, right? Yeah, yeah but turn. it's still already looking dire. So if I'm Pedro now, <laughs> just bench, attack, filled. This yeah, is not filch. looking good. Oh boy, he's just like, yeah, it doesn't doesn't really know what to do. But it's probably I guess not that difficult for. Yeah, he knows that the Mimikyu is probably going down, but he has to filch. 
So there's another basic, if he maybe draws a communication or something, he can go for the ADP. But... Yeah, and Joshua Fokugia. is just <laughs> rushing through this, trying to uh, win, take this game as fast as possible. The first one took like, yeah, 30 minutes, which is fine for it's a single like a game. Longer game. It's, well, not, uh, it's a bit longer, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, now he needs to finish two games in the remaining 20 minutes. And like, if he gets a donk, that was like, quote unquote donk. But like, if he ben could bench Pedro out, that would certainly... Uh, help his chances and he knows that like he has to take this chance and he needs to there like it's hard for him to play safe now because he knows he needs to take the win as fast as possible so as we see the greens for the fiery flint uh, grabbing energy out of the deck and yeah he will for sure be able to take the knockout um, grabbing the greens for the next turn as well uh, really good his throws actually yeah, throwing the Jirachi away is fine, I guess, because you t only want to knock out the big tag teams. And you mean Victini? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Victini Prism Star, <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, draw that away because it can't reach the numbers um, in this in this deck. Like, in the Ability Zard deck, there are 18 energies, so if you have 16 in the discard pile, you just go, okay, 320. But, uh, yeah, in this deck, it's mainly a utility Pokemon to recover the energy if you're maybe yeah. out of it. And it's also just good against like ca casual GX or non-GX Pokemon. It only needs two energy cards. But yeah, in this matchup, this is a typical tag team matchup. So just want to take two knockouts and win. And we are already here. The first um, prize card taken mm -hmm. by Joshua. And Pedro is put in a position which is very difficult to recover from. He just needs to hope that Joshua with us quite a lot and now yeah like the counter gain is activated but it doesn't Rosa. help him because oh yeah he does he right. have one i think ah, he yeah, has one perfect. yeah there is one so it's not too bad but still pretty bad <laughs> i guess i um, mean just whiffing the energy at the beginning yeah is and it, turn one energy attachment is so important when you play uh adp that's why we see people tech wait and see hammer yeah exactly it. Uh, wait and see hammer is just like yeah the 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 thing you want to do the most and this is why ADP is pr probably one of uh, like why it used to be so popular or it's still it's still somewhat popular at least not at this tournament anyways but you just want to have an energy and a Pokemon turn one yeah and that's already your perfect turn one like when you, you think about the perfect th think about the perfect turn one for something like ability Zard or Mewtwo or Pikachu Zekrom. They compare the perfect Pikachu Zekrom turn where you're like, yeah, I just turn one, need to get the Pikachu active with two energy and then stadium. <laughs> that's that's what I want. And ADP is just like, yeah, I just want an energy and a Pokemon. <laughs> and that's it. So yeah, uh, that's very, true. Uh, very nice here. But Pedro didn't even get that. So mm, I mean, at least he can get a Pokemon so he doesn't get benched out. And um, yeah. You see, yeah, the trainer card he grabs is actually another Rosa, so um, he's expecting to his Kaleo to be knocked out very soon as well. So, probably you just go bench attach, and then um, I mean, I think it's very smart here to go for another Kaleo because then you manipulate the prize cards your opponent can take. If he knocks out this one, this Kaleo, and the next Kaleo as well, uh, which like Yoshua will certainly have the resources to be able to do so. Then he is on one prize, and if if he doesn't get, like, if Pedro doesn't allow the Blasphalon GX to use its DX attack, then uh, Pedro can stamp him to one. But still, uh, like it's Pedro's making the best uh, the best out of a bad situation. Yeah, I would say. And next turn he can even attack with it if he uses the um, counter gain. Mm -hmm. So he could take a knockout. Or he could just put it active. I don't know if Pedro plays something like an energy switch. I don't expect him to. No, but I don't think he does. No. Yeah, I mean, that would be kind of cool in the situation, but he decided f to go for Kaleo GX. But Sonic Edge is just a... Uh, wait, is it affected yeah, by... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's just 110 damage. Because of the weakness, it's actually enough. Otherwise, it... Uh, wouldn't have been anyways, but oh, Joshua There's does go for the double custom catcher or yeah. Super important to hunt down those energies your opponent attached when, like before the ultimate ray, the energies are so precious that ADP puts into play, so you want to target those down and uh, 
Yeah. Pedro will, has very, very little chance to actually come back in this one. Probably you try to... Mm, I'm not well even sure if you would try to go for ADP because Yoshua has at three prizes, so... But, I mean, like, in theory, Yoshua can just target down the ADP on the bench. Yeah. But what else is there? There's one Kel you already knocked out. Mimikyu wouldn't really help you anyways. Yeah. So there you I have think no attackers in your deck other than the ADP that yeah. can deal but with the But if it works out, if the Kel your Jax get knocked out, well, but, I mean, Yoshua wouldn't really want to attack into Kel your Jax and put himself in this situation. He just wants to accumulate more hand cards mm -hmm. and then just... Um, yeah, use double custom catcher and use his energy cards to win. So Pedro is kind of forced to stamp, I would say. But yeah, let's see what he's going. A stamp for. should come really, really soon, but maybe not just this turn. Okay, there we see. Yeah, I mean Pedro has three, st uh, two stamps, so you can stamp now and then you can stamp after Yoshua takes the next knockout. Yeah, so. exactly. So you, yeah, I like this. Like make it as least, at least make it as hard as possible for Yoshua to. Um, to win very fast, at least make him stumble a little bit. Like, usually in Pokemon, you don't want to fight losing battles. You just be like, okay, fine, let's go next. Yes. But in this certain scenario, uh, Peter is like, okay, I want to make you stumble. I want to make you. I want you to take as long as possible for the win, so um, I can achieve that one last point that I need to. Yeah, and Pedro is <laughs> just trying to maximize his chances, like, oh, maybe my opponent can't retreat, maybe my opponent doesn't have enough energy cards. Um, after the stamp, of course, um, it's very difficult to yeah, draw all the pieces you need, and Pedro is just like, well, I play two cards now, mm -hmm. and this makes you need, and this makes you to need one more card additionally. Yes. So it's just maximizing um, his chances here, and he is already fighting from behind. Uh, it's difficult. Well, yeah, why do you touch the energy now? It's kind of a yeah, waste you situation. You don't want to get it taken out from the active because you want to preserve it, but you also don't want to bench an ADP because it will give, you give Joshua the, uh, the opportunity to win instantly. So I guess you just attach active. Yeah, and here, and we go. here we see like his hand would have been perfect mm -hmm. to just attack and take the knockout. He had the fairy flint and he has a, a fire crystal. However, um, because Pedro paid the double custom catcher. Now Joshua it's a can't just bit attack. Awkward. He needs, uh, yeah. P uh, Joshua needs some. I mean, he has attacks. a poker gear, so maybe he hits a welder, but that's not reliable. Like he, poker gear can whiff. We all have seen that. Like he open six dead cards and a poker gear, and you're like, ah, oh, please hit the welder, and then you just lose. Yeah, and so Joshua goes for okay, the energy. Okay, he goes for the retreat. Retreat, all in. He knows. Well, yeah, there's no, he has no way time. Pedro can take any knockout here. Four energy cards, so 200 maybe damage. I would have liked to see Joshua actually bench the Blacephalon GX when he had it in his hand. Yeah. He had it earlier, but then it got s uh, shuffled into his deck by the reset stamp. So maybe if he benched that, because if he benches that, he only needs one energy and then he can just retreat and burst GX. Yes. So that maybe would have been a play that... I mean, I, n I, I see that you don't want to risk it, but like Pedro will probably not be able to go on the offense uh, anymore in this game so uh, you can't really be punished for benching the Blacephalon JX so I would have liked to see Yoshua do that but it's fine um, he's probably going to win this game anyway but I don't know if it's enough time like nine minutes or probably like eight minutes with the setup it's yeah, really it's Espe really rough. especially it's like I really dislike these kind of situations where it's like for one person the tie is a win and for the other person only a win is a win. Um, because for Pedro he just needs to tie. If you look at the match score, um, Pedro won has more points than Joshua, yeah. so he just needs to tie this game actually, and Joshua just really wants to win. Actually. The one tie Pedro has was on stream in round one. So yeah, like true. over <laughs> the last 12 rounds, he went 10 and 2, which is, yeah, it, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we see a Cynthia Catlin here. Yeah, for the extra effect, probably, I don't know. Discard it, draw some cards. Yeah, nothing really useful here. I guess he just needs to bench up ADP, attach an energy, then play a switch and retreat. Or yeah. yeah, he can even alter creation. 
Oh no, it, it doesn't trigger the special effect. Yeah, it would only deal plus 30, which yeah. wouldn't do anything, so... So, yeah. Let's see. Take call, grabbing the ADP, Cynthia and Caitlyn. Out of the deck, yeah, bench the ADP, just switch and make your sure you have even more resources to take the knockout, so... Yeah, but in theory, like, if I'm Pedro, I would also try to get something like, uh... Like, I would probably uh, just use two of them, and then use, like, uh, Hala. No, uh, Melo. Melo and Lana? Melo Lana, like, because if the active one gets knocked out, then you lose anyway, so it doesn't matter if it has an energy or not. Yeah. But if it gets damaged... Oh, he plays two switches. Okay. Well, then and the judge then isn't escape. asleep anymore, but, yeah, okay. Whatever. <laughs> escape board and retreat. Then just... Uh, yeah, so this is just him burning cards for the Lily potentially to draw more cards uh, if he comes into that situation and just passing. And just had got the greens. So he has enough energy, just needs to show the fire crystal. Yes. And his hand. Get this. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's right. it. Yeah. That's six energy. Okay. And now we enter game number three. With only seven really, minutes. Really, really scary for Joshua. He needs to be super fast. And Pedro doesn't, like, I mean, he's not allowed to play any slower than usually. Yeah. But he doesn't need to Yeah, no, he's, quick, he's so. not playing. He's uh, playing at a reasonable pace. Like, yeah, he's not, like, he's not stalling, so it's still fine. But this is why I really dislike these situations where it's mm -hmm. like, you get down pair and then your opponent doesn't like he needs to win and he can't ID but you just want to tie and then you're like well now I won yeah. the first game and so I don't want like I don't want to scoop but also I need to play normally but I don't want to play normally so it's a kind of a weird asymmetrical uh, yeah. like asymmetrical situation like usually if you tie both players are like oh um, I, yeah. I didn't want to tie, it's I could have won, but Pedro was just like, I want to tie. And then like during setup and your opponent gets, it gets a, it's a really weird situation because your opponent's like, yeah, hurry up, you have to play faster. And then you're like, well, I, I just play normally, like I don't have to play faster mm -hmm. just for you. And then it's, yeah, I don't, I really dislike these situations, but here we it's are. It's kind of weird, yeah. At least I got a table judge. Like, yeah, they got a table judge Like without watching, a table so. judge, this can be a very toxic situation when your opponent is all the time mm -hmm. like, yeah, you have to play faster, you have to play faster, you have to play faster. And you're like, well, I'm playing fine. And then, uh, yeah, but there's a table judge here, so it's fine for both players. And Pedro has a mulligan, exactly not what Russia wants to see. Usually you're like, oh, mulligan, nice, one extra card. But yes. here's just like, oh boy, extra one Shuffle. minute for shuffling. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, yeah, a as we enter the end game here <laughs> yeah Petra is just shuffling you can see on the camera he has um, this typical fair play shuffle like look away so you yeah, don't accidentally yeah, look, look at your cards because the moment you accidentally look at one card you have to start your shuffle over because then it's not random anymore and then also yeah if you see a card then that could be used for gaining some kind of advantage looking at the price cards really it's fine. Yeah, nothing nothing too special in here. Yeah, if you're not very familiar with the cards, maybe you're wondering what's the Fermosa doing there. There's no way for Yoshua to attack with it. And it's only there because of the free retreat. Yeah. So after your Blacephalon gets knocked out, you always want to put that active and then decide what to get later. It's just it's just a cool option to have. You can search for it with Ultra Space. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's true. in a very, very weird situation, maybe if you attach a beast energy, it can deal 50 damage, I think. It can knock out some really small Pokemon, but can it's, do it's only uh, 50 there. damage, uh, like 40 damage to Keldeo, right? For yeah, the weakness. True. <laughs> yeah. It's only I guess. Yeah, but it's only there for free retreat. Yeah, it's only there wondering. for free retreat. So Pedro goes first, attach the energy, and here we are, like this, this dream. Everything yeah, he, wants. he got everything. Yeah, yeah attach like energy and so then lucky. <laughs> he got everything, <laughs> um, and he actually goes for a stamp turn one. So this is interesting. I I really like these kind of like I mean I, I don't like them as a player because they're really weird, but they're interesting to talk about since this changes Joshua's hand, and your starting hand is always a special case because com like unless in other games 
Mm -hmm. Your starting hand is not a random distribution because there is no starting hand that doesn't include basic Pokemon. So you usually know if your opponent just op for example now, he opened a Blacephalon GX. This is not ideal starter. So just by this you already gain information about your opponent's hand in Pokemon, which other card games don't have because you don't like if you went first you don't know anything about your opponent's hand. But in Pokemon you actually know a little bit about their hand. So for example now Pedro knew there was no basic Pokemon in Joshua's hand. And now stamping means you get a new hand of six and these might include basic Pokemon, so Joshua has a lower chance of drawing supporter cards. This is how the like this is how this interaction is interesting for me. I mean most of the time when you play a term on stamp it's just because you're like well, I have I to have discard it. And I want to draw more cards yeah, off the Lily. <laughs> exactly. It's just like, yeah, I want to play Lily, so I just have to get rid of it. And it doesn't matter since you have six hand cards anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have like a Dedana, for example, then you have to make a decision. Well, my opponent has six hand cards. Do I play it or do I play it not? And you can see here, he has a bad starting Pokemon. So you know there's no other basic Pokemon. So there's a yeah. higher chance of getting something like a Welder or something like this. So yeah, that's just interesting. Maybe something... Uh, the viewers can think about if the commentary is uh, boring for you, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, Pedro, did he already play the Lily? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he played the Lily, now just Tech Hall. Nothing tech really hall he grab. wants. He just, yeah, the, the Hala here is run nice because it guarantees, guarantees the turn, the turn to Alter Creation if he actually wants to go for that. I think this time around you can go for it because your opponent started with the Blasphalon GX. Yes. And actually, Joshua plays no switching cards, so um, it would be pretty tough for him to get into an... Oh, you're, you're correct. This makes a Blacephalon start even worse. Yeah, so it's really tough to get into a baby Blacephalon and then go for the Fireball Circus for the full six. So, yeah, you can just... If you're Pedro, you, li you really like to see the uh, Blacephalon GX start right here. All right, so now... Um, Pedro continues his turn. I think the ideal card he wants is also uh, just a Chaotic Swell. Yeah, because it really just makes Joshua's well. hand so much worse. Prevents him from uh, using the Ultra Space. Yeah, as we just see it, hitting the field. Yeah, ultra going space for, comes down. Um, yeah, Blacephalon. But yeah, Martin just said, there is no switching card in Joshua's deck. And this is so key right now, because then Pedro knows, okay, I can just ultimate, uh, I can just alter creation next turn so I don't care. Yeah, probably a low risk. Of an yeah, now that he sees, he sees the greens there's actually a 0% chance that uh, the fireball circus will happen next turn because there's no way to retreat. So yeah, just um, going for a welder, fiery flint, get energies onto the onto the hand. Uh, yeah, he's play he plays the fiery flint. Like usually I don't like to see that, like I don't like Wait, did he put yeah, his he own the green spec? The fire reflint needs to go to this card pile, right? Wait, did he put the green spec that he just played? He put something into his hand, and I think he put the, the fire reflint in his Can you, like, hand. maybe someone can ask? Yeah, or, like uh, it's a... Uh, yeah, he fl just flipped the card that was on the table and flipped it, and then it went into his hand, so I think... So he has a welder? Oh, no, there it was a welder. No, I think it's fine. No, maybe it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, and also it's time we out now. We should just double check, and it's time out, so. Yeah, yeah time out. Yeah, I think I think he grabbed he grabbed the welder uh, off the greens, and then it was on the table, and he just flipped it into his hand, like flipped oh, it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought that was down. a I thought that yeah. was a greens that he had put back. Yeah, so I I wasn't also I wasn't sure wi that, which card he flipped. Yeah. So I thought it was a card he played and then flipped into back but into his hand. Now it's time so. out. So time got called. The judge already notified the players about it. It was in Joshua's turn, so I think the game is already over, and it's a tie because. There is no way for Yoshua to draw six prize cards yeah, in two Pedro turns. Yeah, Pedro gets basic Pokemon. Yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, Pedro just needs another Jirachi, and then basically the game is over. If yes. he if like if he plays another Arceus Dialga, then it's a little bit different because if Yoshua, no, I don't even think it's no. theoretically possible for him to um, get so many cards in hand. Yeah, but they're just going to continue, like play it out, just play the the, the game to the very end, and then it's fine. Um, as we see, the tech call coming down here, yeah, probably going for the altered creation this time. 
Um, oh no, the, the Arceus Park is confused, so he would have to flip for the confusion. I, w I would just pass. Yeah, <laughs> I would just pass as well. There's like, there's literally no like reason I mean to if do my it. If my opponent wants to continue to play, that's fine. I would hear in this situation, I would just say, okay, I have, I have three Pokemon in play. If you knock out all of them, it's five prize cards. It doesn't win you the game, so... Mm -hmm. Just it's true. You have two turns left, so what do you want to it's do? Just going mean? to go for the Filch, draw two cards, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. It's turn two. And yeah, we see Yasha will play Welder. Um draw attach two energy, draw two extra cards and then um, yeah, but he doesn't even have a way to take this turn with the Baby Blaster full on, so he's prob just no, probably just no. Yeah, send. exactly. For that, like you would have said, last turn he would have needed to get Welder and like Welder to Energy active, and then this turn Welder to Energy on the bench, and Energy then retreat, and then I mean he would have needed six additional Energy to take the knockout on the ADP. So even if he even if he draw perfectly, I don't even think that uh, checks out. And here we see it. Yeah, Yosha's unfortunate, just like, well, uh, quite not, not quite enough time to finish a game three, but Joshua takes it like a good sportsman, wishes Pedro good luck in top eight, probably as uh, Pedro will most likely advance into the final eight. And yeah, yeah. I'm really t excited to see the rest of the players who also made top eight and yeah. see the decks. And So interesting game. Um, the giveaway we just talked about ended, so we picked the winner and... Because Twitch has a weird messaging system, please uh, check your whispers. It's M Carton, so M underscore C A T R O N. Yeah, check your whispers. Um, otherwise, yeah, and then in the whisper, just tell us your uh, email or Twitter or something like that, so we can contact you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. We will have another one for top eight and also one yes. for top four and for the finals. Um, stay tuned so for lots that. Lots of giveaways coming. Yeah, we will also keep you updated um, with the top A situation mm -hmm. since we went into time. Probably the other games already finished as well. So um, stay tuned and see you then. See ya.